Started at the bottom right of Balcha Beach, Christmas edition uh, we have in the red colors the Terran player in this TVP match. It is... Slayus Teja! That's right, Slayus Teja, oh, with a very, very colorful keyboard. Plays a lot of his keys apparently. At the top left we have his opponent, Rodos player in the blue colors. Chrono boosting his Nexus. Name is Genius. A lot of genius fans, especially one vocal one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, talking about TVP again, I feel that we had a conscious decision by Squiddle skipping the upgrades in favor of his being able to get Templar Tech as well on two bases. Later, when he had the three bases, he slowly, maybe a little bit too uh, late, started to get the forges with the upgrades. I'm not sure if I agree with that decision. What about you? What do well, you think? here's how I feel about it. Okay, I think it's pretty smart. It's Crossfire. It's the best map in the entire map pool of GSL for Storms. There's so many choke points. There's so many ramps. It's the best map, absolutely hands down, for Storm. He knew that he wanted to use Storm to defend that third base. That was very clear in his play. He wanted to get that ramp held by two high Templar, always at the top. So if he tries to run up it, he eats a ton of Storm. So I like that choice. But... You know, you've got to be more careful with your High Templar. Throughout that entire game, he never once used a Warp Prism to hide his High Templar. He always had him kind of clumped up with all he of his units. He split them at all. He never split them. And that was really his downfall, I feel. He never was prepared for the EMPs. Boxer didn't even have to try hard to EMP him there. And the Tage just smartly on this game, just to talk about this game a little bit, is uh, since it only takes two buildings to wall off, is going to go for a one barracks command center. And Genius is not going to know whether or not that's what's going on because he did not scout. Well, even if you scout early on this map, it's, it's just hard to stop that. It's a really uncomfortable map for Protoss, isn't it? You are never able to get that scout into your yeah. opponent's main base. You have no idea what he's up to. And I feel that's why we see a lot of one or two ba uh, base all-ins by Protoss. They are just... Uh, we have seen a lot of DT uh, drops into the main base, for example. And this is just because you have such a hard time to anticipate what your opponent is doing. The standard play is the expansion that we're seeing by Teja right now. But we've already seen a lot of barracks play and uh, a lot of early pressure. And most of the time the Terran player will have the well the advantage of his opponent not knowing what's happening. Very true. A very aggressive Marine Scout by Teja is actually going to end up losing that to the Stalker if Genius chases it. Oh, Genius going the wrong direction. Unfortunate. Um, we've actually seen on this map a lot of players go for Blink Stalker all-ins against a One Barracks Expand because it can work out really well because there's a lot of area to blink into the main from. And also you can blink well against the bunkers at the front. You can get into a good position with Blink Stalkers on this map. Genius has taken two gases, but again, two gas with the Nexus not even harvesting from his second gas. It was kind of a trick play, I think, by him. He was hoping his opponent would see the second gas and then make the Nexus behind it. But in this case, not using the gas, I like that. The Blink Stalker play that you mentioned, the key is obviously having that one observer, uh, best two observers, so that he can yeah. actually have vision onto the high ground. And the Terran players that we've seen lately playing on Belcher Beach are trying to scan those as soon as possible, take them out, and then you are in a very comfortable position because you know that it will take some time for the Protoss to rebuild yeah, that true. observer, and you will just buy a little bit of time where you can get Marauders out, where you can get a bunker if need be, depending on how aggressive your opponent is, so... Yeah, and even uh, we've seen a lot of Terrans who have figured out what's going on making a bunker on that high ground, so... Anyway, Robotics Facility and two additional gateways going up for Genius is very common. This is the most common follow-up to a one-gate Nexus. He's also put a pylon at the top right, and that's to spot drops later. may even decide to hide something there later, but most likely he's just preemptively putting that there to spot drops. It also allows him to have another warp in point, so I like that choice. Scan goes down, perfect timing. He knows for sure it's not going to be a 6 gate or anything like that. It's just going to be a 3 gate robo follow up to this very standard and safe play by Genius. And right after the scan, Teja adds two refineries, going for a lot more gas now. Yeah, in fact, he's only built Marines so far. And with this build that we see from Teja, with the gases expand, when you go up to three barracks like he's done, you can actually move out and put pressure on with your Marines, and that's exactly what he's going to do here. Interesting uh, supply depot placement <laughs> for Teja. Will not finish. Gonna spot warp prisms, I suppose, with that. Oh. This stalker's gonna see the push. <laughs> Paying attention to the stalker. For a second, I thought he would walk right into the Marines. And I'm a little bit shocked that Teja has decided, well, there's a stalker that's seen me. I can't go through with this. He actually could have gone through with it. But uh, is gonna decide to turn around and will kill this probe that forced the cancel of the depot. 
Peugeot already has the first engineering base so that he can start with his upgrades with a plus one. Uh, he doesn't have Stim, he doesn't have Combat Shield just yet, and the War Prism is being built for Genius right now. <laughs> what is going on, Calgar? <laughs> I'm like, why is he sending all his Marines to kill one probe that's a bit overkill, and he just like shoots at it once? He's like, actually, this probe has done no wrong, okay? <laughs> he like had a change of heart, he was like, it's okay. The probe is begging, and they're like, please don't kill me, I have a family. And Tay just like, just this once. <laughs> Showing mercy. You. He's like, but if I ever catch you over here again? Well, that probe might turn traitor and try to warp in a proxy pylon at some point. Yeah, man. It's like Fox and the Hound. He like warps on the proxy pylon. And then Tage is like, I'll get you for this. Because like the proxy pylon caused Tage's dog to like fall off of a top tall bridge where there was a train coming. No, actually, that was like too much of a stretch. <laughs> I'm like about to fall before <laughs> dying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the Warp Prism is now going to, to perhaps try to drop four Zealots, but Tasia is prepared for this. He's already got Marines in his main. Not going to be able to do a whole lot. I love when I make jokes that are like so much of a stretch that I like. I like don't even know why it's funny. By the end of it, I'm like, what was I? Where was I going with this one? It's like the maps are laid out in my head, but then eventually I take a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. One wrong turn? <laughs> uh, maybe a few <laughs> wrong turns. Because when you make the first wrong turn, of course, all the turns following that one are wrong as well. <laughs> Trying to get back to your initial point, and you forgot what it actually was. Genius going for just one forge. Twilight Council coming up as well here as it goes up to six gateways, and it looks like I like this. He's just going to keep the Zealots in the Warp Prism and drop when he sees his opponent move out, so that's just always one way to turn your opponent around. Can he charge now? More and more Zealots join the army, and Genius is at the same time confronted with his opponent's tech, which is Stim, Combat Shield, and plus one attack. He's getting plus more armor, which is really the upgrade that most Protoss players go for when they are relying on a really gateway-heavy army. Yeah, and... The robotic support bay coming out as well here from Genius. A lot of commitment to both techs on two bases of both of these Protosses we've been watching today. And Zealot drop, you're gonna kill a few SCVs. The second he saw that army moving out, boom, picks him up. Doesn't lose anything. Nice, able to retreat. And that's going to cause Vikings to be made, though. Oh, actually, he's making two more Vedibacks. Interesting. Once the Vikings come out, usually you can't do this anymore, but Teja opting to get four Vedibacks first. Adding the Ghost oh. Academy. Upgrade. Yeah, adding Upgrade. the Ghost Academy as well. Oh! <laughs> Expansion at the bottom left, and there's already the pylon, the probe turned trader. It was begging for mercy. Teja spared the probe, and now this is how it's paying him back. Well, the probe cannot see the command center though because it's not built at its exact correct location. It's built slightly to the side for some reason. The SCV and the probe made a deal. <laughs> They're like, all right, well, I'm not going to warp anything to kill you, but like, make sure that Genius doesn't see this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, Genius continuing to scout around, actually. He Using scouted that. the drop. Yeah, he scouted the sorry the pylon at the bottom left. We just saw that uh, he dropped and uh, he's about to kill it. Yep, killed the pylon and the treacherous probe. Well, Punishing it. This last pylon will be killed now. Genius actually never found out about that base from the pylon. It's not granted vision of the base. That's really interesting. Yes. That he has no idea about the base. And Tage is actually, oh, I thought it was being made into a planter. I was like, no, Tage, it's not right. <laughs> oh, that would have been horrible. <laughs> it's, it's an orbital. Now, the Templar. Te yep. <laughs> right to the <laughs> yeah. Templar archives on the way. You as go well ahead. as the second porch. Three ghosts already in production, though, for Tasia. That third base is very vulnerable right now, and Tasia actually opting to keep the majority of his army at home, not really pressuring with it. He kept a ton of units at his natural and at his main base. He sees this base now, but he can't stop it. It's too late. Both are roughly the same supply. Teja trying to, uh, well, not really take down that base. He just scouted it, but he knows about it now. We have ghosts in the army, just built three of them. And once again, the upgrade advantage goes to the Terran player, only by a small margin, though. Plus two started. And plus one armor about to finish. Yeah, and the upgrade's actually fairly even in some regards, but Genius a little bit ahead. He's got Chrono Boost as well, so he should be able to get really far ahead with his upgrades. And a battle for the Watchtower commences. Genius wins. Both of these players are now really, really passive. I mean... 
TJ actually, <laughs> TJ went to mine from his base, realized that the bottom left base was one hex wrong, and then as right as his SCVs were about to return the minerals, lifted it up for a second, and all the SCVs took the long path home. Actually, he brought it to the uh, third position home. Oh, he completely moved it, okay. He, com he moved it completely, but he still missed that point where he lifted it up and the SCVs all returned. That shouldn't have happened, but yeah, he completely moved it uh, from the left to the right. All right, now Genius with the double forge upgrades far surpassing his opponent upgrades very soon if he can get that finished. He may have a time where he can do some damage. He's making Archons right now. The third base of Teja, again, is not a planetary. It is an orbital, so it is fairly vulnerable. And Teja being very passive right now, not actually attacking, doing any drop play. And Genius always has the Watchtower, so he's always aware of these pushes that are coming. Man, you are right. He's now getting the upgrades, and because of his Chrono Boosts, Genius is now getting ahead in upgrades. Earlier on, he was behind Teja with a very, very early plus one, thanks to that early engineering bay. And both of them are just now very passive. The same supply, 190 for both of them. Just yeah, Genius not committing too much to an aggressive playstyle. Genius only got two Colossi, so the Viking production has continued so far for Teja. He's actually been going up to about... Right now he's got five Vikings. He's probably going to make four more. He's going to go up to nine, so nine against two Colossi. Not the best composition, considering that Genius' ground army is really strong. He's got Blink on the way now. He's got a ton of drop defense in his main, which is pretty awesome. The Ghost splitting by uh, Teja over here, well, actually just put them back together. I was like, huh, he split his Ghost pretty nicely, but... We're going to see an engagement here. Thought. No. Wants to EMP any Templar he can find or get those Archons. Storm is done and he's got a lot of Storm energy, but here we go. Yeah, battle is finally starting and Genius is on the run. Teja moving towards that third base. Oh, the Ghost missed down. the EMP. And all the ghosts are taken out by the ground army. He has to be really careful. There are so many high Templars with enough energy for storms. Oh, Teja, if he moves into the storm, storming everything. Genius with mass storms right now. Yeah, really good storms. Nice micro by Teja. And with good splitting, it looks like Teja is barely going to trade okay here. He does take out the last Colossus, but with the storms coming out, Genius does come on top. But a decent trade for Teja. Actually, he's taking down a lot more units than I have expected. He was really on top of this game when dodging those storms, and in the end, ended up losing roughly the same amount as opponent. Oh, but wow. And look at this. Chasing, reinforcing units, and also harassing the orbital right now. Genius all over the place. And that puts him ahead with 140 supply to 100. A fourth base for Teja being upgraded right now, and he's getting an orbital command upgrade. He's not going for the planetary. Very interesting. And I have to say, I think the battle would have actually gone in Teja's favor even in an upgrades. Even though the storms were decent, Teja did such a good job splitting his units, and he had a better composition there. So we'll see what happens in this next battle. Genius obviously very ahead in supply. He's got this fourth base going up right now, and Teja not actually harassing. He doesn't feel comfortable right now because he's got such a small army to harass that top right base where there are photon cannons, and Genius is going to have this base over here in the middle very easily. Genius took down 20 harvesters of his opponent, and that puts Teja down to 51 against 73. The economy of Genius way ahead, but Teja slowly but steadily closing the gap in supply. Yeah, just doing nice little zealot harassments. I really like this. Can I actually escape with two of the three of those zealots? A ton of Archons in the composition here. Genius is going to tank a lot of hits for him to get some good storms off. Also may even eat some EMPs. He only has one ghost, though he's building three additional ones. Yeah, that ghost doesn't even have enough energy for him. He just got enough energy for one. And you know, it looks like Genius actually decided to go home. The fourth base is ready for both of them now. Genius added a Nexus as well. Yeah, Genius is mining from his fourth base, whereas Teja is not. He's got his orbital just kind of hanging out over there. He's not using it. 3-3 three, three is about to be done for Genius. Teja only at 2-2 with only plus three weapons on the way. He doesn't have armor on the way. He may be able to actually kill this orbital. He doesn't have very many stalkers, though. Genius has the momentum going for him now. He won the last encounter. Teja is behind, has to play a little bit more defensive. And Genius might just attack his opponent. But he's quite happy now with just denying that fourth for the time being. Yeah, it's really smart. He's got four bases. We may see him even add a ton of extra production. He's got... Warp Prism Speed, well he had it on the way for just one moment, decided to cancel it. He should add gateways, he's maxed out, he has max. oh he's now getting the Extended Thermal Lens, apparently he forgot about that completely, he didn't have it in the last encounter either. Yeah, he's adding cannons now. Yeah, adding cannons with his minerals oh. is really smart. Top right. 
going to kill that factory with those cannons so he can take that base. So many Archons to tank hits here, but there are a lot of ghosts in the mix now. Shield upgrades for Genius now. He wants to completely max out on upgrades, and he can afford that. Four bases against three. Teja trying to get back into a position where he can mine from his fourth. It's, all, it's only going to take one wrong engagement, though, for Teja to get back into this game, so Genius has to be very careful. Once again, trying to sneak Zealots into the economy, into the mineral line of his opponent at the third. Teja don't allow, uh, doesn't allow that, though. And he is going to actually send Zealots now into the fourth base of Teja. Teja just not able to mine from this base. Oh, nice! The army of Teja moves to the right, and Genius takes the opportunity to get into a position to kill the third of his opponent. Very nice position now for Genius. EMP doesn't hit all that many units. Yeah, he hits a few Archons. The Templar, though, for now are fine. One Templar did get EP. The second one, though, has enough for two storms. He's engaging again. Uh, Archons are being attacked. Stim Forest and Teja is going in. Where are the Templars? Where's the Storm? Teja having a much better army here, and one Storm goes off but does not hit very many units. Genius needs to blink back. He's going to lose all of his Stalkers. Oh. I don't know why Genius is continuing to engage here. Huge miss micro by Genius, and Teja just getting the fair end of this fight. Another Storm hits the Terran army, but he's just taking those Storms. He's eating them up and taking down Genius army and he will lose that fourth base already retreating with the probes. Ah, uh, you well, mentioned it, well, yeah, you just mentioned one it, wrong engagement. Battle. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what's interesting actually is that Genius during all this was able to resecure a fourth base at the top right. So Teja is now even destroying the Nexus only puts him at even footing, but he still has a much better army than his opponent. Albeit it does have uh, a lot less hit points. This could snowball if he takes the momentum into his opponent's base, is able to take down the production buildings. That could be huge. That pilot is powering a lot of buildings. Atosis pilot right there. If he takes down the pilot, that would cost him quite a lot of time. But no, the pilot is actually safe. Yeah, and it looks like these charged zealots are going to be enough to push this army back, at least temporarily. The Terran army does not have plus three armor, but it looks like Teja has enough. Now this army consists of probes and one Colossus, but the Vikings have something to say about that. Teja missed an opportunity here. He could have unpowered four gateways, but he did not. He's now trying to take on that Zealot army. Oh, nice storm. Six Archons are being built, and the storm still quite a number on Teja. He is dropping behind the supply once again. And at the fourth, we had more Aspen going on with the Zealots. Really good job so far by Genius coming back after that bad engagement. Yeah, despite using probes as a majority of his army during parts of those battles, Genius is still up about 15 workers. 69 probes to 45. That's actually 25, that's not 15. It's even more than I thought, Kaldor. And these Vikings are going to kill a Colossus. Well, perhaps not. And now, Genius has actually wiped out the Viking count. We have three ghosts, eight Archons. Oh, six. Six Archons. I promise we can do math with the GSL guys. <laughs> and still in uh, the number one control group for Genius, he has three probes. So, uh, actually, I take it back. He's got a total of seven probes in his control group. But probes can fight. Uh, and this base taken cool. out. And the SCV is going to fall very quickly as well if he can catch them. It may be time for Genius to turn around does turn around, he's satisfied with killing that base. He is on way more base than his opponent. He's denied so much mining at the bottom left base. There's no SCVs there, only mules. Well, it looks like he's gonna engage. Going for it, the Zealots charging in right now from behind. The Colossus killing a huge amount of damage, being attacked by the Vikings though. More storms hit the turret army. Teja is on the road, down to 75 supply, gets 120 times GG! Leaves the game and Genius with another win. He is ahead of this group in 3 0. 3 0 indeed. Genius looking like a boss today, guys. Very well played. That puts Boxer at second place with 2 1. Well, that was a really impressive game by Genius. Um, much better upgrades. It was a very similar game, actually, to the game we watched just before with Squirtle, but the upgrades were much better, the storms were much better, and he was able to dodge a lot more EMP as he also did not engage in poor positions. There was one engagement that was a little bit bad for Genius there, his upgrades, and a few good storms that were able to win out just barely. 
I think the biggest thing that you guys, I mean, we didn't talk about it as much, you know, you guys got a lot of shots of it, but the Zealot the harassment, zealots. yeah, was really, I think, the key factor in this game. There were so many times where he was not able to mine from all of his bases, the Zealots pulled the SCVs away, he lost a few SCVs here, lost a few there, and suddenly he's 20 SCVs behind, and when the Zealots ran in, sometimes he had to lift his orbital, and every time Genius never wanted to end the game, he just was like, well, I want you to lift this base, fly it back into your main for a while, I am taking the right top right base, and then, then when he lost his base in the center, it was okay because he had that base already up and running, he had the good probe count, he had better upgrades, and in general just hit good storms and the key battles. And after those two Terran versus Protoss, we have a Terran versus Zerg in the next match on dual sides. Yeah, I believe it's our first one of the day actually. Yeah, it is. And uh, Sasan against ASD. Yeah, ASD, obviously like we said earlier, feeling a really confident coming in here. Sazan right now 0-2, this is a really important game for him, he's got to win it. If he doesn't win it, he's going to be out of the group, there will be no way for him to recover. So he's got to win this game if he wants any chance of advancing from the group. So of course he's going to try his hardest. The map is dual site, so a pretty good map for ASD, I would say. Although some Zerg players do like this map, I think it's a little bit Terran favored. It's about to start soon at the right. We have a player from OGS. We have Sand the Zerg. He lost both his games today, both against Protoss. This is a different matchup, so that's where we might see him shine. Man, oh. ASD, he looks like a killer right now. Well, now he looks like he just wants to adjust his mouse bungee, but just moments ago, he looked like a killer. Look at him, man, he's ready. I feel like ASD is actually sitting in like a Gundam suit right now. He's about to launch, he's like so ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the map is loaded. Are you ready, Kaldor? I am, I am. I hope you guys are ready at home because here we go. Look at those 